These are true stories based on submissions from the BuzzFeed Unsolved Network audience. These are their encounters. One night when I was in seventh grade, I had two friends sleeping over, and we were in my basement. My brother, who was around seven at the time, had bought himself a new Furby and got bored of it after a few weeks. Then it sat untouched in the basement closet. As you may know, Furbies sometimes begin to talk when they are moved, yet they only speak gibberish, not English. This night, it was around 4 a.m., and we had all the lights out, and it was silent. We were laying down to go to bed, and out of nowhere, we hear this Furby's voice say, Come play with me. And then it laughed. At the time, I didn't know it didn't speak English, so we wrote it off and went to bed. To my horror, in the morning when I checked on it, not only does it not speak English, it also had no batteries. I was a freshman in college in the Philippines. It was late at night and my friends and I were on our way home after watching a play at one of the campus theaters. As we were nearing the College of Education building, I looked up to the sky and saw a woman jump from the topmost floor. I told my friends and we ran over to the front lawn of the building to help the woman. But when we got there, she was gone. The guard came rushing over to us because I was so loud about it. My friends didn't see her because I was the only one who felt the urge to look up. The guard helped calm me down from nearest area then told me that I must have seen the ghost of a woman who had jumped to her death from that building years ago because it was the anniversary of her death. In 2015, I went on a trip to DC for the 4th of July with my family. This was our second trip to DC, so we decided to take the last day of our trip, the 4th of July, to go visit Mount Vernon, George Washington's estate in Virginia. It was the middle of the day, scorching hot, and there was absolutely no air conditioning in the house, aside from a few fans placed sparingly. I'm a huge history buff, so I was very excited about touring the home and knew a lot about George Washington and his state previously. So I knew that he passed away in his bedroom in 1799, but that's definitely not what I was thinking about when our tour guide led our group upstairs to see said bedroom. His bedroom had a lot of really delicate artifacts in it, so we weren't allowed to go inside, and there were little plastic barriers preventing us from doing so, but you could stick your head into the room and look around. For some reason, I was the only one in the group who decided to take a look. When I stuck my head into the room, I was immediately struck by how absolutely freezing cold it was in there. And I don't mean that there was a light breeze. It was as if I had stuck the upper half of my body into a walk-in freezer. I was confused by this because there didn't seem to be any air conditioning in the room. So I looked around to try to see if there was any fan or AC unit that I just wasn't noticing, but I didn't see one. I decided to take my head out of the room and ask our tour guide why it was so cold in there. But then I realized that I couldn't move. I was paralyzed from the waist up. Every part of my body that was in the room was completely stuck in place. I struggled to pull myself out, but couldn't. I started to panic and tried to open my mouth to call for help. But when I opened my mouth, no sound came out. All of a sudden, from the other side of the room, where there was a little piece of furniture, a mirror, and a water basin, probably where Washington washed his face and shaved in the morning, I felt what I can describe as nothing other than a pair of eyes staring at me, almost like the sensation of someone staring at you while you sleep. I didn't see a figure or anything, but I felt this huge and intimidating presence walk towards me and stare me down. It was horrifying, and I physically could not tell you how much time passed in that moment, because it really felt like it could have been an hour, but I guess it was only a few seconds. After a while, I finally broke free from my paralysis and almost fell backwards onto my butt. My mom asked me what was wrong, and I told her that I wanted to leave. She didn't believe me when I told her the story later, but it still scares me to this day. When I was around eight or nine years old, my mom told me to go to bed early on a summer night, so I threw a fit and began screaming at my mom, I hate you. My mom always told me never to go to bed angry, because the devil can possess you and steal you. After slamming my bedroom door shut, I turned off the lights and laid down. It was near midnight, and I was still angry. Suddenly, I heard tapping by my door. I had chills run up my arms. Then I heard a voice call to me. It sounded like my brother's voice, but he was calling me a nickname my mom used for me. I figured it was my brother, so I started yelling at him to go away. The voice taunted me with the nickname until my mom ran to the room and turned on the lights. What are you yelling at? I sat up and noticed she was the only person in my room. I told her my brother came into my room and started calling my name. She looked pale. Your brother is sound asleep in my room. It was exactly 12 a.m. on the clock when my mom walked into my room, and it was freezing even though my window was closed and the AC was turned off. There was something in my room that night. And to this day, nobody in my family understands what happened. All I know is that I'll never go to bed angry ever again. Last year, I went to the coast of Rhode Island for my cousin's wedding. We were just a few miles from the Lizzie Borden house. We get to the wedding venue and it's this old, big, creepy looking mansion. Immediately, my spooky senses were tingling. I made a few offhanded comments about how it seemed like this would be a place that was haunted, but within a few minutes, I was distracted by the festivities and all thoughts of ghosts escaped my mind. 
The wedding was out behind the mansion, where we could see the water. So everyone had moved from inside to the back lawn. All afternoon, my cousin and my aunts had me grab things for them. Eventually, one of them asked me to get a hair clip she had left in the dressing room area. The dressing room area was in the upstairs part of the mansion. Only people in the wedding party were allowed access up there. As I ascended the red velvet spiral staircase, the spooky feeling started coming back to me. Suddenly, I felt like every portrait on the walls were watching my every move. As I went into the dressing room, I decided I would just grab the hair clip and run. I walked to the large table and found the clip. As I was getting ready to run out of the room, I saw my reflection in the mirror on the other side of the room. My hair had gotten all messed up from running around, so I stopped to fix it. As I was standing facing the mirror with my back to the open door of the room, I saw what looked like the form of a person standing in the door just over my shoulder. Frozen, I stare at the white figure of a person in the mirror for a few seconds. Quickly regaining my composure, I turned around and looked at the door. No one was there. I swear that I had just seen an old white gentleman. I couldn't make out the clothes he was wearing, but I definitely knew that no one in the wedding party looked like him, since we are an Asian family. So if it was a random guest, they wouldn't have been allowed to go upstairs where I was. While I was standing, looking around in confusion and mild fear, the door to the bathroom began shaking and banging, like someone was locked in there and they were trying to get out, thinking it was just a bridesmaid that was stuck in the bathroom. Most doors were creaky and jammed frequently. I went and easily opened the door. No one was inside the small bathroom. Scared out of my wits, I made a run for it. In my fancy dress and six inch heels, I ran back down the red velvet spiral stairs and didn't look back until I was outside. Later that night, the bride's hairstylist told me he saw the same apparition of a man just minutes before I did. Several years ago, I was deeply involved in amateur ghost hunting. A friend at the time told me her home was in fact haunted and I jumped at the chance to tackle the challenge. We first conducted an EVP session in the master bedroom where my friend's grandparents died. After asking questions like, do you want us to leave? And what are you gonna do if we don't leave? Several people in the group immediately began complaining of headaches and stomach pain. I was met with responses like yes and harm. We began hearing noises from the kitchen where we moved to conduct another session and the room became drastically hot, hot for a January in New York City. And I raised my hands in prayer and began to close my eyes. As I prayed, a member of the group told me my hands were being pulled apart by nothing. As I opened my eyes, I became disoriented and my vision blurred, and I heard several people in the group saying something was coming up the stairs from the basement. I got up and noticed a horned shadow creeping up the steps. I yelled at it, do your worst, I'm not afraid. I woke up on the floor a full five minutes later. I managed to get out of the house, just to be told I smelled like ashes and fire. I got home to notice what appeared to be a handprint on my ankle and it was hot to the touch and extremely painful. I had gone to church and explained what happened, and the priest offered to anoint the mark with holy water, and when it came into contact with my skin, it felt like I was being set on fire. For several weeks after, myself and one member of the group began to have dreams of being threatened and taunted by a man in a black suit. My grandfather built a house for him and his first wife. Sadly, she died falling down the basement stairs. Later, he met my grandmother and they had my mother. Years later, my grandfather passed away, leaving my grandmother alone in the house. A friend of hers had stopped by to see if she would sell the house. She gave them a tour, and afterwards, her friend handed her his card. The minute her hand touched the card, a loud crash came from upstairs. For reference, the upstairs is laid out like a square hallway that loops around a pillar, and on the back of that pillar is a bookcase. The shelves in that bookcase had collapsed inward, like someone had slammed down on them. Books were found in every room upstairs, behind beds, in closets, and even in rooms on the other side of the pillar. My grandma never really believed in ghosts, but this event, freaked her out. So this has happened to me more than once in the house where my family used to live. From what I was told, there was a ghost in the house that resembled me, so much to the point where my own mother thought it was me. The first incident was back in 2011-2012. I was in my bedroom and I heard my name being called, so when I responded from upstairs, I heard my mom say, never mind, very nervously. Naturally, I go down the stairs and I ask my mom why she was calling me. She then said, I just saw you standing in the kitchen. I looked at her and said, I've been upstairs the whole night. And she replied with, I saw you go into the kitchen and open the cupboard. The next incident was with a family friend named Jamie. The layout of our house was kind of odd. There was a hallway that connected to the kitchen, but it had two openings, so it created this weird open wall situation. Anyway, there was a mirror hanging on the wall, and you could see the reflection of the TV in the mirror. So one day, I went to an amusement park, and Jamie looked at the mirror, then circled around the hallway situation, and asked the other person in the house if I was still there. When she replied, no, she left, Jamie said she saw me sitting on the couch from the reflection of the TV. The TV was not on. The last incident was with my cousin. He had spent the night, and we both fell asleep on the couches downstairs in the living room. He had woken up and went upstairs to brush his teeth in the bathroom. It had one of those giant mirrors that covered the entire wall from the counter up. 
and with the bathroom door open, you could see into my room and my brother's room. He said he was brushing his teeth, and when he looked up at the mirror, he saw me standing from my bedroom watching him brush his teeth and said, Oh, I didn't know you were awake, Cass. He didn't get a response. Once again, I was asleep downstairs in the living room. The next thing I knew, my cousin was shaking me, telling me to wake up and that he had just saw me standing in my bedroom. We lived there for about nine years. My room was always the coldest room in the house, especially the closet in my room. It was freezing in there, and we were told it was a portal. I always heard hangers moving around and I would feel someone or something sitting at the edge of my bed. In the basement, especially if you were alone, you could hear footsteps constantly. I never felt too scared or threatened, but the idea of a ghost looking at me creeped me out. I live in a house that was built in the early 1900s. When it was built, it was intended to be used by a doctor performing checkups and work in his own home. One room at the front of the house freaks out nearly every visitor who comes by, and my friends growing up always described a strange feeling when walking past the room. Some even run past to avoid it. The house consists of a long hallway where you have to walk past every room before reaching an open space, something that I've been told has been quite claustrophobic and has scared some of my friends who used to visit often. Back in 2015, my then-girlfriend explained that she was seeing snakes in one corner of the room and a snarling dog in the other. This was all during the middle of the night. I had experienced what I thought were hallucinations of a lost child and a strange man that I assumed was one of my mother's friends. When I asked who it was, she said there had been no one matching the description who had entered the house. During the night when leaving my room for a drink or to go to the toilet, I never felt alone. I felt like something was there, but not acting out. Now as an adult, I walk into that front room and still feel cold in a sensation that I can only describe as emptiness. To this day, I wonder what kind of patients the original owner had, and if any of them died on the property. I was lying on my bed watching videos on the internet when I thought I heard a knock at my door. I took out my headphones and listened for another knock. I didn't hear anything, so I put my headphones back in and continued watching the video. Shortly after, my video started buffering at exactly 6 minutes and 66 seconds, and I felt someone tug at my foot, which was hanging off my bed. I quickly got up and looked under my bed and around my room to see if my sister was playing a trick on me. I was alone. I ran out of my room and saw a tall, dark figure standing at the end of the hallway. I closed my eyes, and when I opened them again, it was gone. When I was about 9 years old, I had a friend that introduced me to the urban legend of Bloody Mary. We used to play around and dare each other to summon her in the bathroom one at a time. One night, I was feeling daring, so I went into the bathroom and did it, except I ran out before I could see anything, and I went to sleep. I woke up around 4am and heard footsteps coming up the stairs. At first, I thought it was probably my parents, except I began realizing that the footsteps never seemed to make it to the top. Then I thought, oh, the tooth fairy. Remember, I was 9. I lost my tooth that night, except I looked under my pillow, and it was gone. The steps started getting louder, faster, and closer, and sounded as if someone had already gotten to the top of the staircase. But I went to check. Nobody was there, and both my parents were asleep. I got so scared that I pulled the covers over my head, and the steps suddenly came to a halt. I slowly uncovered my face, let out a sigh of relief, and went to turn my body towards the wall, when I felt a hand crawl down my forearm and bang it against the wall with full force. I had zero control over my arm, which is what freaked me out. When I woke up, there was a dent in the wall. About four years ago, I was home alone with my newly three-year-old daughter. My husband was working late, so I knew I was in charge of bedtime. I didn't like being alone at home because I always had this off feeling like someone was watching us and my mom was always superstitious. My daughter and I went through our routine and when it was time to put on her pajamas, she told me that she had a friend who would stay with her when we put her to bed. So I asked her who it was and she looked at me and said, well, can't you see him, mommy? He's standing right behind you in my closet. He's very big, how can you miss him? We moved less than a year later. We had just moved to the suburbs from the south side of Chicago, so naturally my family and I were slightly uneasy in a totally new environment. My younger brother, however, was a nervous wreck. He refused to go into the basement or even the stairs leading down to them. No big deal, he was around five or six at the time, so we chalked it up to the typical kids scared of basement rhetoric. But things did get weird pretty quick. Apparently, I started sleepwalking, something I never did before we moved, and I would stand outside my parents' door in the middle of the night. I would do this a few times a week, even standing right next to my parents' bed, and just stare. My mom would always tell me to go back to bed, and according to her, I even tried to leave the house. I was around 10 or 11. One night, we were eating dinner, and my little brother just loses it, sobbing hysterically and pointing at the door that, you guessed it, opens up to the staircase that leads to the basement. My parents are super concerned, asking him what's wrong, but all he can manage to string together is, it's staring at me, it's staring at me. A little time passes, and nothing really happens. Things seem to have really calmed down. 
It was the middle of winter, which is when my birthday is. I was hanging out in my room and I heard someone singing happy birthday. Weird, because it wasn't my birthday just yet. So I went into the kitchen, expecting to see my parents with a cake. No one was there. I thought that maybe I was just hearing things. I went back into my room and I heard it again. I started looking around and I finally found the source of the noise. It was coming from the vents. The vents that all lead to the basement. The last straw for my parents was probably when we couldn't find my younger brother. We looked all over the house, no sign of him. We were all freaking out. Eventually, we would faintly hear someone crying through the vents. He was in the basement. My mom wouldn't let me go into the basement with her, so this is what she told me happened. She said that when she ran down there, she saw a dark shadow and that it was shaped like a man. Now, my mom is your regular religious immigrant parent. She didn't allow us to bring anything regarding death or the supernatural into the house because according to her, it would be inviting it into our home. So of course, this freaked her out. She said that she repeatedly told whatever it was to get out and leave her family alone. Apparently, it disappeared after a few moments and she found my brother. After that, she hung up a few crosses all over the house and a Virgin de Guadalupe statue. Nothing weird happened since, but we still ended up moving. Moral of the story, don't move to the suburbs. <laughs>